my name is Dana Harris Seeger. Welcome to the print shop at Visual Philosophy. Today I'm going to talk about how to mix your ink properly, how to take it out of either the tube or the uh, can, and how different um, inks, whether that's screen printing ink or uh, etching ink, how you can mix those um, properly so that you can create your best prints. So there are a few different types of ink that we're going to talk about uh, mixing today. And the first one is um, litho ink or ink, oil-based ink out of a can. So I would recommend getting a um, can ink if, for one thing, it's the only way you can get it, like for instance in this Hanko um, litho ink for lithography, it only comes in a can. I don't think you can get it in a tube anymore. Um, so you have to buy this amount, but of course it will last you for a long time. And the advantage of getting it in a can is that, number one, you have a lot of it, but number two, um, well, I don't know if there's advantage, but... Um, <laughs> So, oh, uh, <clears throat> so this type of ink comes in a can. It's made for lithography. It's oil-based ink. And you'll see when we open it up that it has a um, sort of a skin on it. And generally the, the litho inks have, if they're made for hand printing, um, they might have some dryers in them, but they, which means that they have something in them that will enable them to dry faster. Some inks like this um, Graphic Chemical Shop Mix Black, it does not have any dryers in it, and so it will stay wet, you know, as long as you don't expose it to the air and um, leave the lid off. But if it has that skin on it, I recommend using a um, ink knife. These are also called putty knives and you can get them at the um, hardware store. I like the inch to inch and a half. If they get too big, it's hard to get them in there. Um, but sometimes they only sell them that big. If you can, I'd get them in this one inch to one and a half inch. So if your ink comes in a can, you might have to find that um, the skin that's on the surface. And if it's loose enough like this ink is, you can just carefully take out a little bit and put that skin back on. And the skin is meant to keep that surface from drying so that it, you don't waste ink. So this, this little um, piece of paper oil skin is meant to keep it from forming its own skin due to contact with the air. So you can see that it's still nice and wet and I can draw it out. One of the characteristics of ink is that it's thixotropic. Uh, most inks, whether they're water-based or oil-based, um, tend to sit and stiffen up when they're in the can or the tube. You'll notice that um, when you pull it straight out of the, the tube or the can, that it will have that pigment and a binder uh, will separate. There'll be like a juicy bit that might come out because it's naturally um, tends to, to settle and separate and um, kind of like a ketchup bottle before you shake it up and pour it out. It gets kind of uh, thick and doesn't want to move. So this is how we help it move. We um, scoop up the ink and then drag it. And you'll see the more I'm doing it, the looser the ink gets and the more um, manageable and malleable and actually um, congealed and cohesive it'll get. So the more I do this, the more I'm waking up the ink and getting it ready to do, in this case, a litho. I like to keep it on the same side, so scoop and then flip and then drag. And that keeps your ink knife from getting too dirty and having to like, 
scrape it all off. So wake up your ink, whether you're using it straight out of the can or mixing it together, you want to make sure that you wake it up. All right, and then if we're going to move to another color, we want to clean our ink knife or use a new ink knife. So I want to show you one more way um, that's different from this kind of looser ink that has the the little cover on it. This ink is the Shop Mix Black, and you can see that it doesn't have a skin on it. It's designed not to have, um, to, not to dry, so that we can keep reusing it and it stays nice and tacky. But in that case, we want to make sure that the um, surface of the ink out of the can is nice and smooth and doesn't have any real dips and pits that can increase that surface area and cause drying out. So what I've done here is I'm gonna take my ink knife and positioning it kind of vertically, not going in with the corner and gouging it. I'm just going to scrape along the surface. And I get a little bit of ink, so I gotta push a little harder as I scrape and turn and pull the ink out that way. So I'm just skimming the surface and doing it like this, whether that's etching ink out of a can or litho ink, will enable that surface to stay nice and flat. And if it does dry out, if you're using etching ink, that is a possibility. Uh, if it does dry out, then you can easily remove that top layer and you don't have these big gouges um, in the surface that you'll have to waste a whole bunch of ink trying to trying to clean off the dried out parts. So that's why I recommend scraping it using this technique, scraping the surface. And then you can see how much stiffer this ink is. So it requires a lot more working. And litho ink definitely is stiffer than most inks because it's designed just to sit on that surface in very um, small area. If we were going to modify this for an etching ink or if this was an etching ink, we would either need to add some oil like um, burnt plate oil or um, some other kind of modifier that would some varnish to make it uh, a little bit looser because you'd have a heck of a time wiping off an intaglio etching with this ink. And we'll talk more about ink in another video for different purposes, but I just want to talk about mixing it in this case. So you can see now that the more I'm working it, kind of smoother and softer it's getting. So humidity also plays a role in this, in ink, and uh, depending on the, the weather, what your environment is like, you might have to uh, modify your ink as well while you're mixing it. But I recommend if you're going to mix colors, say I wanted to mix these two colors together, I wouldn't want to add any modifiers um, before I mix them. I would want to mix the colors, make sure that the color was correct, and then add the modifier. That way I know the consistency of my ink based on the, or I know the color, sorry, the color of my ink pre any kind of um, atmospheric conditions. And then I can modify it based on the atmospheric conditions of that particular day. So let's just mix these two together and see what happens. So I'll pick up this ink, and when you're mixing, it's a good idea to have um, like a well of each one, because if you're not sure about the color that you want to achieve, if you're trying to match something or get to a certain um, color, it's good to add each one slowly. So particularly, you can see how the black kind of takes over in this case, darker colors, tend to overwhelm the lighter colors, and it's easier to, to add more than it is to take away. So I recommend starting with the lighter color and adding just little bits of the darker color 
And that goes for screen printing ink um, or ink out of the, the tube, the etching ink as well. Pretty much any kind of pigment. There we go. Nice and mixed up. So I'm scraping, flipping, and dragging through. And my ink knife gets the most um, drag and mixes it the best when it's a little bit vertical, not dragging horizontal. That doesn't, that just sort of skims the surface. You really want to get in there, tilt up your ink knife more at a vertical, like, I don't know, 70 degree angle while you're mixing. Because if you don't mix it well enough, then you'll end up with streaks. You'll have, uh, blotches or bumps that aren't mixed in, particularly with the screen printing ink. Um, you'll see you really need to mix it up well. There we go. And we're nice and mixed and we know that we like that color, then we can either save it or use it right away. But oil-based ink you can save, you can package it up in like a Um, what's the word? <laughs> package it up in uh, Reynolds wrap, what's that called? Tin foil. Um, and fold it on itself so that the air doesn't get to it and you can save it. Um, if you're mixing up a batch for, to use later. All right, so let's clean our, one of our ink knives and we'll, I'll show you how to do the same thing with the tubes. So the way that I clean my ink knife is I scrape all the ink off with a rag, being careful or mindful of the edge because that holds a lot of ink to each of those edges. And then if you're dipping into another color like say white, then you'll definitely want to get a little bit of oil or mineral spirits on the rag and clean that uh, thoroughly because any little tiny um, color that remains will then go right into your um, next color. So the advantage of the tubes is that you don't have to get the whole amount, right? You don't have to get this huge can. You can get smaller, um, which of course is less expensive, um, but it also enables you to, let's see, to only squeeze out a little bit at a time. The disadvantage, I would say, is that it isn't already mixed up. And this one you can see is kind of hardened in there, so it's separated and yeah, it need to be re reactivated, but in any case, just going to show you with a little bit that color. It's a pretty transparent color. And then let's mix it in with this one. So that one's transparent too, but it's very dark. So. Mixing them together very thoroughly is important. If I don't, see there might be streaks or colors that aren't, uh, aren't cohesive and you'll end up with, that's pretty, with big streaks or unexpected um, blotches when you go to print. So obviously this isn't enough to do anything with, um, but just for a demonstration purpose, uh, I wanted to show you how I mix these inks with the palette knife or with the ink knife. Um, if you were going to do use this for any kind of uh, etching or block printing even or litho, you wanna mix up a sufficient amount for your use that session or that day. 
um, because if you mix up a color and you get it the way you want and then you run out, it's going to be hard to get it back to the color that you, um, that you made originally. And oh, here we go. I like to use these, um, these little cutoffs. Uh, that's a dirty sign. I like to use these little cutoffs um, for drawdowns. That way you can see the color that you're going to uh, get. And the way that I do that is you take a little, take a little bit, you don't need a whole lot. And you very tightly pushing nice and hard, drag it down the surface of the paper. And that way you can see how it's going to look when it's on your print, because obviously that looks a lot different when it's all bunched together on your palette or even on the glass when it's spread out. So on the paper color that you're going to be printing on, do a test, draw down. Um, you don't need a lot of ink to do this, but you do need to push hard at that vertical kind of angle so that you get a nice thin drawdown and it's not too thick because that will deceive you too. And you can also see how well it's mixed too at this point. If you have like a blotch of a random color or it's dark in one part, then you need to mix it again um, till, it's, till it's good. So that's a little bit about the um, etching and the, and the litho ink out of the can or the tube. Now we'll move into the screen printing ink. So now we're talking about our screen printing ink. And in this case, I'm using uh, water-based ink. These, these ones all happen to be made by Speedball, which is a brand I really like. Um, it's inexpensive, but it's also, um, it's really great for either fabric or paper. Um, these are both water-based, acrylic-based inks. Um, I mix them together. I don't know if other people would recommend doing that, but I find that they there's um, they work really well together. There's not um, anything about them that that really makes them incompatible with each other. Um, another thing I really like about these is they come in these little screw lid cans that can be reused. You can see here um, this was originally a silver, and I've mixed. Uh, some bluish in there so it looks kind of blue gray and so that's nice because you can see that it's very fluid in here and as long as I keep the, the lid screwed on tight the air is not going to get to it and dry it out so I love these um, little cans and I'll show you how I mix up um, the different colors using these dollar store spoons because they're so cheap I can just use a whole bunch. If I need to add more of one color, I just keep each spoon per color and I just add little by little until I get the color that I want. Also at the dollar store are these containers that I can mix um, a separate color in and then put my uh, sealed lid on there. This one has a little bit of a Thing, which you want to be careful with, especially if you're mixing into a, a already um, a can that's got already got a color, is you can see that a little bit on the outside area it hasn't been quite mixed together. You want to make sure that it's really well mixed because again, like we just talked about, if there's any parts that are um, not mixed together or mixed together well and there's like a glob of, of say white in here then when you go to to squeegee you're going to get a, a big streak of that color and you're not going to be happy with it because you'll have to go back and and redo that so i suggest using your spoons one per color scooping them out these because they're acrylic based they don't really separate but they might get a little stiff so you might need to mix up the, the ink before you um, add it to, to your mixture. Um, you can see that. It's stixotropic, just like the, like the oil-based ink. So the more I work it and mix it with my spoon, scrape and mix, 
then the um, looser it gets. If there are parts, like I took out here, that are kind of stiff and hardened, like acrylic paint does, um, you'll want to remove those because they won't remix and they'll just, um, they'll just block out the, the ink from squeegeeing on um, and they'll be troublesome. So make sure that you remove any of those areas before you start mixing in crusty parts. Otherwise you can just mix like this and I like to scrape and then mix, maybe give a little tap so that the ink on the spoon comes off and then I can keep mixing. All right, let's say I'm going to add a little of this color to it. I always want to add in moderation. So I'm going to add just a little bit of that to the, using my clean spoon. I'm just going to add a teensy bit to it at first to see how it mixes in. And the more ink you have in the initial cup, um, will determine how much that mixes in and what change it's going to affect. So it didn't really do a whole lot. It did kind of darken it and neutralize it a little bit. Um, but again, you can always add more. But if I went and just dumped this in and it was too dark, it would be almost impossible to get back to this original color. And I'd have to keep adding so much that it would like fill the, fill the cup. So moderation at first, be patient. And then just like we did with our um, oil-based ink drawdown, we're gonna make a drawdown with our screen printing ink. But the way that I do that is I just get a little bit on my finger and kind of smear it out. And you'll see, because screen printing ink is a little bit um, thicker and more opaque, less transparent, it you can see by just rubbing it on there how it's going to look when it's printed. It'll be more along the, the middle part. If I wanted to make it more transparent, I could add a transparent medium or transparent base. Um, you can't really make it more opaque than it is right now unless you added a little bit of white. That tends to make things more opaque and chalky, but it will also lighten them up like a tint. Um, so then when you're done, and you're ready, you know, you can just save this. I like mixing right in the, in the can because then I just save it, pop the lid back on, and set up for screen printing and I'm ready to go.